Ashley Encinales, Betty is the founding director of Bcruit, a fintech headhunter agency, placing executives and senior managers worldwide. Her company works with clients in 11 countries and counting, including the US, Spain, Romania, Mexico, Colombia, France, and the UK. She's also a triathlete and philanthropist. She even has her own TEDx talk. Betty is based in London, but she's currently visiting home in Bogota, Colombia. She's also a clever hybrid. Thank you for coming today, Betty. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Gabby, for inviting me. It's very nice to be here. How is the situation in Colombia right now with everything that's going on with Corona? Yeah, in Colombia, it's been quite difficult, unfortunately. For example, in Bogota, the capital of Colombia, we have 70% full the UCIs, which are the units of intensive care. We don't have the same amount of ventilators or infrastructure to cope with this pandemic. So the government is trying to really have control as much as possible in how we proceed every single month what's open, what's not open, how people can get out or not. The airports are closed until the 1st of September. People cannot travel internally, of course. Most of us, we try to follow the procedures and the protocols. Unfortunately, I think that for Colombian people or for Latin Americans, we love socializing like uh, a lot. We all have to be a lot more clever and educate the others by telling them you have to put the masks in a better way or you have to clean your hands or you have to put alcohol when you enter public places and everything else. Yeah, that's true. It's amazing how many people don't really know how to wear a mask properly or wash their hands properly. <laughs> I keep seeing people yeah. with masks that are covering their mouth but not their nose. I'm like, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not an expert, but I think that it's very important to always make sure that you look after not only yourself, but you're aware that you can actually contaminate other people. One of the big things I wanted to ask you about today, it's important, as you said, to take care of others. A lot of people are struggling with their businesses or finding a job, and you are the expert. I am actually going to ask you some questions that I wish I'd had somebody to ask when I moved here to Germany 10 months ago. Would have saved me a lot of time. <laughs> Tell me, of course. I'm happy to help looking forward to hearing your answers. I know a lot of people are considering this. You were making good money working for others. What motivated you to start working for yourself? I was working with different consultancies within the financial sector. And yeah, the money was very good. It was obviously constant because every month you receive your paycheck and it's a lot less hassle. But what motivated me was, I think the purpose that I have when I was working for other companies, I didn't know what my purpose was, but I always have the quest. When I start working in recruitment, I could help companies get the right person. And at the same time, I could make a difference in those people's life. Back in the day when I was working for other companies, I had a time schedule that I had to just be in the office at 8 o'clock and maybe finishing around 7, 7.30. And I always thought I really want to have the flexibility for my time. But I also wanted to help people individually and have that gratitude from them for what I was doing. Yeah, hey, that's really cool. Yeah, I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with the freedom at the beginning. They say the best thing is the freedom, but the worst thing can be the freedom. How do you balance it out? Oh my God, completely. I completely agree with that statement. When you are an entrepreneur, you have to be a lot more organized with your time. You are able... To wake up when you want and you are able to decide the hours that you work however if you're not organized then that freedom becomes the weakness of your business because you won't be able to make the money that you need to make so i think for me at the beginning i really struggled because i didn't have the motivation of putting the dress on the heels on going out to an office some days at the beginning i felt quite anxious sometimes i had depression because i didn't know how to do it. Nobody teaches you how to do it. You don't know how to organize yourself because when you work for other people, you have a time frame. When you have your own company, you have to start organizing your own schedule. And that was very challenging at the beginning. It took me around three to six months to really think, okay, what's my routine? How can I create a routine from starting the day at a certain time to go training, to go and meditate, and then to sit down on a chair 
turn off my phone and start working and then have the breaks. That didn't happen in one week. It took some time to know what works for me. For example, I tell you, it worked for me to dress up, wear high heels at home when I was starting working at home seven years ago. I didn't know that because if I wear my pyjama, for example, I didn't have the work done as I do when I'm dressed up and with high heels on. Little things like you start sometimes talking to your friends a lot more. People think that because you work by yourself, you can be available all day. You're taking longer breaks at the beginning. Then I understood that the only way to make it work is that you work a lot harder and you manage that freedom that you have wisely. When you have your own company, you have to make that freedom work in your advantage, and that means creating routines and stick to them. Yeah, it's a big adjustment. You mentioned there was some anxiety, too. I had worked for myself before this point, but I think I got anxious when I had to be an immigrant entrepreneur. Having a business in another country that you're not familiar with is very difficult. <laughs> challenging because if I decide to start my company in my hometown, I had a lot of more guidance. I have my parents, I have friends here who own businesses. When I started seven years ago, all of my friends were employees. So when I start my own journey, I had nobody, absolutely no one to ask questions on how to start a company, what to do. So I had to use a lot of Google and I had to really go and push myself to go and meet people who had companies and ask them, how did you do it? You, you don't have the same network that you probably have when you start a company in your hometown. Yeah, when you don't have that role model, there's a lot of trial and error. So let's help some people out. How do you start a business in the UK? Luckily in the UK, we have a lot of support and it's easy as well to set up a company. The difficult part is to make it work and to make it profitable. But to start a company in the UK is, is easy. You only have to really register the company in a place from the government called Companies House. I did a limited company. I, I remember it was like 50 pounds, now probably between 50 to 100 pounds. It takes probably half an hour to register a company and you have your company limited. In every country you have to investigate. Every country has their own rules. So, I mean, again, in the UK it was very simple, but when you see the records, you see a lot of people that start their own companies. They register the companies, but they never make them profitable. And there's a lot of companies that they close within months or a year because they never make a profit. Yeah, that's true. There's a stat that says most companies fail within the first five years. One of the things that I have to deal with is a lot of ups and downs for my own company. I think the difficult part is to maintain a company and be able to live from your own company. That was a challenge. To keep reinventing yourself as an entrepreneur, how can you create new ways to adapt yourself to the market? Because sometimes when you start a company, like I started seven years ago, I thought I wanted to do a certain sector. And through time, I decided that that sector wasn't as profitable as other sectors. So I had to start working with different companies that I never imagined because I needed to adapt my business to the demand of jobs and vacancies. Every entrepreneur who wants to start their own companies, one of the, the attributes or the skills that you need to have is to be able to adapt because sometimes you have an idea of what you want to do, but actually the demand is different. Learn how to adapt yourself to provide those services that people need. Yeah, that's true. I agree. You have to be able to adapt and also be humble enough to realize you were wrong. <laughs> Sometimes the market tells you differently and you have to think you might have to readjust yourself and, and learn something new that's going to provide you a lot more money and a lot more business. You've got to really be flexible. Yeah, that's true. You mentioned yeah. before in our talk before we started the interview that you have been working more online. How else have you evolved during the pandemic being at home? Well, that's a great question. I, I tell you something, when this pandemic happened, I was in the UK and I wasn't really prepared for this. I've never really worked a lot online. It hasn't been my strength. 
the recruitment that I do is a lot more present. So you have to go see people face to face, do interviews and everything else. But I think one of the things I'm learning throughout the last couple of months is that the industry is changing and we need to change with it. Most businesses now are developing their services online or have an online presence. I had to start doing a lot more interviews online, of course, and trying to connect with clients online. In my industry now, most companies are doing videos before, obviously ask people to come to the office. But these are the things that we need to start changing. So these are roles that I never thought I needed to do. But now the demand is on those kind of roles. So you have to start thinking, okay, I need to learn what are the skills that these people need to find these jobs? Where can I find these people? Where can I find those companies that are recruiting for those roles? So it's been a little journey and I'm hoping as well to keep learning so I can do those roles in a much better way and work on them. All right, it sounds like you have a really good plan. Once you start, you see what's the next step. You don't have to know the whole end story, but just get to the next step. So with your business right now, have you thought about growing in the future? What do you think is the plan on that? I grew the company a few years ago, and I thought back then that that was what I wanted. You know, I started a company and I thought, okay, I want to have an office in the city. I want to have a team. And I did have that. But I realized as well that I had other priorities in my life later on. And if I had that mindset of growing, I couldn't have what was more important for me, my personal life balance. So I decided, Gaby, two years ago that I didn't want to grow the company any longer. I still want to work independently, but I like to have a lot more freedom. That's me today. That wasn't me, for example, 10 years ago when I really wanted to make money, grow a company, blah, blah, blah. So I think every entrepreneur has different priorities. And I think it's very important that you question what's your priority. It's true. You always have to examine, is it your priority or a priority that somebody else gave you? Yeah, I was also living a lot of people's desires. A lot of people were questioning me when I started, oh my God, how, how big you want it to be? I didn't even have those answers back then, but I started employing people. And I realized that the more people I had under me, the more I didn't have time for me. <laughs> I didn't have to work at the weekends. I couldn't finish work until like 11 in the evening. I was working all the time, which is fine. I just didn't want to have that kind of lifestyle. I don't think there is a manual that you have to follow. Every entrepreneur will find their own path. Some have big companies, some have a small, some are independent. The most important thing is to not follow what other people want for your business, but what you actually want for your business. As an entrepreneur, I always encourage people to meet other entrepreneurs, to get some ideas on how they did it that works, to get a mentor that can help you and guide you in what the next steps could be. But ultimately, again, it's not a clear path. There are so many things that can affect a business. So you've got to learn on the way how to deal with all these obstacles. Not everybody wants to be an entrepreneur. What advice would you give to someone who's looking for a job right now? So the advice I give you for people that's looking for a job right now is, first of all, do a great CV where you can actually put your experience and your expertise and what you're looking for in the next steps. Also, look for the portals that are suitable because every industry is different. So there is a specific industry portals, recruiters and headhunters. So approach those, share your CV and also prepare well. Prepare for the interviews. If you have to do a cover letter, prepare a good one that stands out and try to also network a lot. You can also talk to people who are in jobs that perhaps you're looking for for the next steps. So ask them, how is the job? What is the company about? I think it's very important to do research because one of the things I realized or I understood in my career as a recruiter is that a lot of people are in companies or in jobs that they hate. After a couple of years, it's very hard for them to move out of those jobs. When you look at the job specs, also to see, well, am I suitable for this kind of job? Or actually, I don't have the skills to get this job or to be happy in this kind of job. 
It's, it's a combination of really doing a lot of work uh, to investigate and to really understand who you are and what are your strengths and your weaknesses. Culture fit is important for the company, but especially for you. At 18, you had to move to the UK. You didn't speak much English. Now, years later, you have a very productive life. You're part of the UK, your culture in a new country. What would you tell to people who are trying to adjust right now? Try your best to be flexible. You've got to learn the language. The only way to be able to get harder in your career is to also speak the language where you are living in London. I find many, many Latins that never learn to speak English. They've been living there for 20 years and they never have the courage to go to classes or they never find the time. And I truly believe, and my biggest advice is, if you go to a country, try to learn the, the language because that's one of the easiest ways to develop a career. Secondly, try to really make friends so you can save yourself a lot of mistakes. You've got to be open-minded and try to embrace a new culture as your own. You are where you are. You have to adapt and not compare, but at the same time, take the best of each culture. It's not about forgetting who you are, where you come from. It's about opening your mind to embrace different culture. We have that same problem here in Germany. There's a lot of Americans who have lived here for a long time. They don't speak any German or very badly. <laughs> I don't want to be one of those people. As long as you don't speak the language where you are, you are a dependent, is how I feel. 100%. And the thing is, the more you embrace the culture, the more you learn the language. Because you'll be able also to make new friends where you are. And you also have more possibilities to find opportunities. But if you're close-minded and you think that you're in your own mind correcting everything, you will never be able to really embrace anything new. I've seen that a lot as well. Like in London, I meet many people that keep on saying, oh, I wish I was there. Well, fact is, you are where you are. And if you want to change, you can actually change. But I think it's very important to make the decision every day to be happy. If you're always comparing and wishing you were somewhere else in a different job, in a different country, eating different foods, in a different weather, then you're going to become sad and miserable. But if you're start embracing where you are and trying to make opportunities where you are, trying to meet people, embracing the culture, then you make your life a lot easier. Most people underestimate how important it is to embrace the culture. Thank you so much, Betty. I don't want to take a lot of your time today. For those of you who are listening, we're recording this on a Sunday, so I was really happy Betty had time. <laughs> no, absolutely pleasure. And I hope actually this helps people making decisions and also being happy where they are at the moment. Where is the English journey part of this episode? We asked Betty to focus on the business part for this special broadcast. If you're in the finance industry in the UK, New York, or Hong Kong time zones, you can contact Betty about job vacancies. She also helps people in any industry with CVs, resumes in the US, and interview coaching. You can email Betty, info at bcrute.com, or find her on LinkedIn as Betty Encinadas. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite listening app to hear other episodes. For more info about our courses, editing services, or our scholarship program, look at our website, cleverhybrids.com. You can also find the transcripts and show notes for our episodes there. This is Gabby V. Until next time, learn by doing and asking. Mm -hmm.